Shootings here in Chicago is on the rise. Certain hospitals are just getting overloaded with the trauma. The far southeast corner of the city is 35 minutes away in the best of conditions. There are people that's dying on their way to the hospital. People do not care about what's happening to these people on the south side. When people are shot, they can't be taken to just any emergency room. Instead, shooting victims need an ER with a trauma center, a facility equipped to deal with traumatic injuries like gunshot wounds. The south side of Chicago is in dire need of more trauma centers, a fact that has become even more apparent in the past few months. Chicago has suffered a dramatic spike in violent crime and shootings in 2016. The last time the south side of Chicago, where many of these shootings are taking place, had a level one adult trauma center to treat victims of gun violence was in 1991, when the Michael Reese Trauma Center was shut down. That site is what you see here behind me now, nothing more than an empty lot. Hospitals aren't required to operate trauma centers and Chicago has seen many of them shut down in recent years. The reason? Trauma care is expensive and hospitals lose money especially when treating gunshot wounds, because victims often lack health insurance. We're at 68th and Damon in Inglewood. There's been a shooting. There were five victims, three seriously injured. They were taken to three different trauma centers around the city. Two of the victims were pronounced dead later that night. The main thing when we have a trauma patient is doing the most we can in the smallest amount of time, depending on where they might be shot. You know, we want to make sure that we're controlling that bleeding. Starting some IVs en route, we can start giving them some fluid. But what they really need truly is a trauma center as quickly as possible, because that's really the main thing that's going to wind up improving their outcome. Shootings here in Chicago is on the rise. Certain hospitals are just getting overloaded with the trauma. And sometimes, you know, during our peak periods of the summer, they just can't do it. So they have to go on bypass, and then we have to go to the next closest appropriate hospital, which could be a significant time past that hospital. How does that sort of play into what you're doing and what you're seeing on the streets here, you know, especially if you have a shooting on the south side? Having worked down on the south side, they have to go a significant amount of time to get to their closest trauma center, which obviously then plays into the survival rate, which, you know, certain things, time matters. The University of Chicago operated a level one adult trauma center on the south side until 1988 when the school closed it for financial reasons. In recent years, activists have targeted the private university, urging it to reopen the center. In my estimation, this is the biggest, most advanced medical center for miles around, and it almost seemed like there's no other solution that could possibly uh, exist for solving this problem of being a trauma care desert. It's so crazy to me to think that, you know, there's market and profit factors that go into dealing with healthcare. I advocate for single payer healthcare system, expansion of healthcare insurance to everybody in the country, because I think that we lose lives for lack of medical care and lack of good access to medical care. It would be great if the university's sole mission in this wasn't to, to, to think about dollars and cents, but to think about lives saved. But they've got to in order to stay open. There were originally nine designated centers. We have since dwindled to six. The University of Chicago dropped out because of financial losses. So Christ Medical Center, which is uh, located about six blocks outside the south side, city limits, at one point would have been number four on the world list for gunshot wounds annually. We're talking about 7,000 trauma patients a year on the south side. That would make Christ, if they were able to actually accommodate all of them, uh, would make them the busiest trauma center in the world. And on average, how far do patients on the south side have to travel in order to reach then a trauma center? The far southeast corner of the city is 35 minutes away in the best of conditions. What's your view on how much distance really is a factor in their chances of survival and of recovery? Time is important. 
the exact quantification of that time is difficult. But if you ask any trauma surgeon, it only makes sense right. that if you have to drive 35 minutes with a patient who is uh, critically injured, uh, the likelihood of that patient surviving is probably diminished. On May 7, 2013, Kevin Ambrose was shot while walking to the 47th Street Green Line station to pick up a friend. He was transported to Stroger Hospital on the west side of Chicago, where he later died. Ambrose, a student at Columbia College, was only 19. Kristen, let's talk about Kevin. Tell me about him. He loved to dance. He loved to write. He wrote a lot of raps, a lot of poetry. So obviously, Kevin was not in a gang. Oh, no. He he did ballet. He, he was really not trying to be a part of a gang in any sort of way. His friends weren't. We did not do gangs in our household. Let's talk about the night that he was shot. Where were you, and how did you find out what had happened? It was around maybe about 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night. My mom starts banging on my door, and she's screaming, like, Kristen. And I open the door, and she's like, Kevin's been shot. And I just, like, I froze. I didn't know what to do. The police was out there in front of our house. And he was like, hurry up, it don't look too good, it don't look too good. And we get in the car, and instead of being able to drive to University of Chicago or Providence, who was a hospital that was literally two blocks away from my house, we had to drive all the way to Stroger Hospital. I don't even know where Stroger is, but I know it's not close. We got there before the ambulance, and there's absolutely no reason why we should have been there first. They had to revive him when he got there. And he didn't last long. Do you think that there could have been a different outcome had he been taken to a closer hospital? I actually strongly believe that he would have had a better chance. But I'm not sure if it would have been a different outcome. He died at the hospital. He didn't die on his way there. But there are people that's dying on their way to Stroger when they could have you know, been in the hospital. They could have been getting the better treatment that they needed. And I don't understand how University of Chicago, they've been on the South Side for years. They know what's happening around them. They should have been opened that trauma center, but they don't care. People do not care about what's happening to these people on the South Side. The fact that they fought back against the level one trauma center, why would you fight against saving lives? You took an oath to save people's lives. And it's disgusting that all these people had to die and all these protests had to happen just for them to even feel obligated to open one. The turning point in the fight for a trauma center on Chicago's South Side was the 2010 death of 18-year-old Damian Turner. He was shot three blocks from the University of Chicago's medical campus and died while being transported to Northwestern Memorial Hospital, 10 miles away. I'm tired of seeing my friends die. I'm tired of seeing my friends bleed out. I'm tired of seeing youth on the ground with no help. Two months after I met Damian Turner is when he was murdered. And that's when, essentially, the trauma center campaign got started. What was the University of Chicago's position at the beginning? In the beginning, the University of Chicago said that creating a trauma center would cost a lot of money and it would take away from some of the other services that they already provide. And that's why it was important for us to do direct action, because we knew there was no way that we could ask them <laughs> to care about our lives. Every time we've done a direct action, I've been forcibly removed by the University of Chicago Police. I've been brutalized by UCPD. They arrested us and they put us in jail for 46 hours. All we have been asking for was a meeting um, with the president, Rob Zimmer, and, 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 and people who actually could make this decision to make a trauma center happen. When the University of Chicago sought to host Barack Obama's presidential library, activists vowed to derail those plans unless a trauma center was built. After years of pressure, the University of Chicago announced in December a $269 million expansion plan that could include the reopening of its trauma center. The university provided us with a written statement emphasizing that they are committed to saving lives. They say that their integrated plan, shaped by community input, would combine a trauma center with other expanded services to better provide for the needs 
of the community. Tell us about your role as the mediator between the organizations that were pushing for this center and the university. I grew up on the south side of Chicago and being uh, alum of the university, adjunct professor over at the Divinity School, I had a relationship on both sides and so it put us in sort of a unique place. We were able to bring people together to begin having those conversations. Why hasn't the issue of trauma care been such a hot topic? I think people have always thought about trauma care in this very pathological, stereotypical kind of way. If you get shot, you must have done something wrong. <laughs> That's what our silence and our inaction has communicated throughout the years. The fact is, you deserve equal access and equal opportunity to health care that the alderman, that the mayor has. You deserve it too, even as a 17-year-old black boy, even as a gangbanger, drug dealer. We all deserve that same access. The university's plan was approved on May 10th. That means the trauma center could open by 2018. But rebuilding trust within the community will likely take more time. Those services are going to be great, and they are going to save lives, but I'm never going to feel like we actually want until the trauma center is actually open and sustained. A trauma center has got to go into perpetuity and be a part of the university's vision for providing care on the south side, even if it takes a loss.